Well, how do their jumps? Design Captain of the Steves. And today, jumps, I want to talk a little bit about Dragon's Dogma 2. I'm going to be doing a review. I'm going to be telling you what I like about Dragon's Dogma 2. And I'm going to be telling you what I'm not so keen on with Dragon's Dogma 2. And then towards the end, I'm going to be telling you whether I'm going to continue with my playthrough or what it means for my channel when it comes to Dragon's Dogma 2 content. So, Dragon's Dogma 2 is set in a massive world. The map is huge, far bigger than Dragon's Dogma 1, The Dark Arisen. Is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Well, it's a beautifully rendition of the world that you're now in. I mean, previously it was in Grand Sis, now we're sort of in this massive, great big open environment that has got beautiful vistas and biomes, and they do sort of merge and they sort of transition quite well together. These different biomes, the water effects look great. The whole game looks great. It does only run in 30 frames per second, though, and that does sort of get to you a little bit in heavy moments of combat. And there is a lot of heavy combat. Every sort of, I don't know, not even 50 yards, 20 yards, every 20 yards, you're going to get an encounter, which just wasn't the same with the first Dragon's Dogma. And where you found your encounters in Dragon's Dogma felt realistic to the actual environment you're in, where now you just get thrown everything all at once. You're going to get harpies, wolves and goblins all attacking you in the same sort of area, all at the same freaking time. And it just feels like too much. Do you remember the old days of walking around in Final Fantasy VII and you'd walk maybe five steps and then boom, random encounter? Well, it's just like that. They're not random encounters. They are actual live encounters, but they're just thrown at you all the time. And a lot of these enemies will just spawn out of nowhere. They just appear. You know, some of them, yeah, they've they got ambushy, like, war paint on and stuff and they're camouflaged. But I'm not on about those. I'm on about the ones that just appear because of popping. And maybe that's to do with the 30 frames or per second, or maybe it's to do with the level of detail draw. I don't know. But it does feel sometimes you're taken by surprise, especially if you're a glass cannon like the archer, and you get hit, there's half your energy gone. And it could be just by a poxy goblin. We're not talking like a giant beastie, no. And that seems to be because of the technical power of the console it's on, or the optimization of what Capcom's put into this um, you know, engine of theirs. And it is quite an older engine, although that it has lifted graphical fidelity massively over the first Dragon's Dogma, I wouldn't say it's a next gen version. I mean, the old Dragon's Dogma does re really stand the test of time. If I had to say to you guys in the viewer verse, which Dragon's Dogma to pick up, I'd say get the first one. The first one, Dragon's Dogma, the Dark Arisen. You want the full bundle, the Dark Arisen bundle, because then you get the bit of Black Isle. That is a far better, well-rounded game, in my opinion, than Dragon's Dogma 2. Now, in Dragon's Dogma 2, I've had the pawns do weird stuff as well, like face plant off of mountains and things like that. Apparently, the latest patch for Dragon's Dogma 2 is going to stop that or reduce that from happening in, in close time. I've had NPCs, quest givers, just not appear where they should be, like on um, the, the whole wolf one where they've taken away the little boy or whatever. Yeah, one of the actual NPCs wasn't there to actually give the actual pinpointed location. You could kind of work it out from what the other NPCs were saying, and you could just go east or west or wherever it was until you come across the blue flowers by chance, which you, you could quite honestly do, but it is a timed event. And I was in panic mode when I came across it, and because I wasn't given a pinpointed location, I checked and I saw that this NPC that other people were seeing just wasn't in my instance. She wasn't anywhere. She had naffed off completely. Um, so, yeah, I couldn't actually progress that quest in the same way that I should. I managed to get it done, but I'd done it in a different way. And I had to rely on an online video. Another time I had to go to the castle at night and there was an NPC standing there that, you know, Brant had actually informed to show me the way. So I go over to this NPC, I talk to her. She's like, yes, follow me, Arisen. And then she just stood there, did nothing, didn't move from the spot. I spoke to her again, yes, follow me, didn't move. So I picked her up and I moved her just a little way just to see if she was stuck on some terrain or something. She still didn't freaking move. I tried sort of doing a reload. Went back a couple of steps, went all the way back, went spoke to her, didn't move. You are the Arisen. I am. Yes. The cat, follow me. Okay, cool. All right, cool. 
So we don't have to worry about guards this time then, we'll just follow her. Go on then. I'm I'm ready. Go. Follow me. I will, if you move. Go on. Oh, come on. Alright. Where do we follow you to? Go on. I just pushed you now. Freaking move! Come on. I'm recording this. There's people actually watching this. And you're just standing there like a potato. Right, fine. Sod it. Um. I managed to get into the castle. Again, I watched another video. But I don't want to be doing this every single time I come across a bug or a blocker inside of the game is look up somebody else's video and see how I progress it. it it's not great. So I kind of, that got me a little bit. Then also I hired one of my friend's pawns and I saw that they were level 104. The previous level cap on Dragon's Dogma, the first one, the first outing, was 99. And once you've hit that, you know, you're almost godlike. In Dragon's Dogma 2, not so much. Um, yeah, you can hit level 104, but you can go way beyond that. I'm hearing like there's the level cap is 999 or something mental. And the experience gains when you get to level 100 or something is like a slug stuck in taffy. So you to hit that level cap of 9999 or whatever, it's probably never going to happen. Not in our lifetimes anyway. So I don't know. I just feel that this isn't really overly... It's not ticking all the boxes anymore, this Dragon's Dogma 2. Although it's bloody brilliant and I really enjoy the combat. Doing the actual playthrough videos, I think people can see my frustration at times. And I would say this is a very frustrating game. And the amount of encounters you get, and it's the same enemies over and over again. I've watched back my content and it's not that entertaining. The only the only combat that will be entertaining is when I come across like the Medusa or Talos or any of the big bosses, the Sphinx, or anything that's a massive challenge. So what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my content with Dragon's Dogma 2 is I'm going to continue playing it, but I'm going to be playing it in my own time. It's going to be casually when I've got nothing else to do and nothing else on. And I'm only going to be sharing with you either really cool elements, like really cool missions that are fun, or I'm going to be sharing with you tips and tricks or massive encounters like with the Medusa or with Talos and that sort of stuff. The more entertaining aspects, or if I come across some really rare loot or something, magical and mystical, that sort of thing. I might even do one or two live streams of just doing exploration and uncovering swathes of the map, just to give people a sense of what else there is to do other than missions and quests inside of Dragon's Dogma 2. But I'm probably going to be doing that once I reach end game sort of level. So that's pretty much what I have to say about Dragon's Dogma. Now, how would I rate this? Well, the very first Dragon's Dogma, The Dark Arisen, I would give that a 9.5 out of 10. And the only thing that really detracts from it is early game, the travel system. You're going to be doing a lot of walking, a lot of backwards and forwards in, and that can be a little bit cumbersome. There is a little bit of a, a steep climb at the start. Dragon's Dogma 2, that climb, that it's not just the start. I've been playing this for a good like 20, 20 odd hours, maybe 30 hours. And I'm still finding that I'm having to walk around on foot of a heck of a lot more than I did in Dragon's Dogma 1. I know there's cart travel. I know there is fast travel. People are going to be saying, well, we'll just get on a cart. It's not always that simple. The carts only go from certain towns to certain places. And even then you can get ambushed. You know, you're not going to get ambushed every 20 odd freaking feet, though. You know, there are ways and means to get enjoyment out of this game. Don't get me wrong. And I am thoroughly enjoying the combat, but there's just too much of it and repetition of it. It's just not as interesting as Dragon's Dogma 1. It really isn't. I'm just being honest, and this is my opinion. There's other people out there, especially if they didn't play the first Dragon's Dogma, that have jumped into Dragon's Dogma 2, and they're like, well, this is freaking special. This is freaking magical. And it is. It, it really is. I don't want to detract from those people. But if I had to rate this out of 10... I would give it probably an 8.5 out of 10 because it's got all the pitfalls of the first Dragon's Dogma, but then it's got new pitfalls. And those new pitfalls are you're encountering the same enemies all the time. And it's freaking tedious because you only want to walk from one town to another and you probably end up with a hundred odd freaking encounters. You use 
in my case, because I'm like an archer or whatever, I am taking quite a fair bit of damage at times. And I'm finding I'm using quite a lot of my curatives and you know, taking stamina and all that sort of stuff quite a lot. So when you get to town, you're going to be combining elements. You've got to be foraging the things or buying new things. It, it, it's just it feels almost like a second job rather than a game at times for me. Maybe it's just me and my level of aptitude and competency inside of this game, which could be a factor. But considering I played the first one and I had far more fun in the first one, I'm just not having the same level of fun in Dragon's Dogma 2 at the moment. Once I've actually got OP and I've unlocked a load of the actual vocations, because so far I've only maxed out the Archer vocation and I'm halfway doing the Warrior vocation. Maybe once I get the vocation that I actually want, which is the Magical Archer, which is the, the vocation that I loved in Dragon's Dogma 1, maybe then I might start enjoying the game a little bit more. But until I get to that point, I think my videos that I'm making for my channel, you can see the frustration, you can see that I'm not having as much enjoyment as I did with Dragon's Dogma 1. And I don't really feel putting out content that when I watch back myself is not overly entertaining. I mean, it's still entertaining. I think it is. I mean, I've watched a couple of them back and I can watch them. But at the same time, it's not something that I probably watch a second time around. Unlike some of my No Man's Sky videos, which you can go back and watch time and time again. They still make you sort of chuckle. Uh, I don't think that's the same hook with the Dragon's Dogma. Especially since each mission can take you a good hour anyway. So virtually every episode is like an hour long. It's just not the same. So I want to go for more hard-hitting, impactful, funny moments, big moments inside of Dragon's Dogma 2. So that means I've got to pick my clips a little bit better for you guys out there inside the view of us, which I still will be delivering. So don't worry, Dragon's Dogma 2 isn't going anywhere right now. It just means that the foot on the gas isn't quite there at the moment. I'm going to be playing this at the weekends when I've got the odd hour or two to play. So don't expect me to be hitting end game anytime soon. That's just not going to happen, people. So there we go. That's my rundown. I'm giving it an 8.6 out of 10. Do you think that's fair? Sound off inside of the comments. Let me know what you think. Have you picked up Dragon's Dogma 2? Do you find the same sentiments? I haven't even touched on the microtransaction stuff. I know that that's, you know, that, that's upset a fair few people. I'll put people off right at the start. But every single one of those microtransactions you can get inside of game. You don't have to buy any of those microtransactions. Just ignore that they're even there. There's nothing inside of the game that pops up and says, go to the store, buy some more crystals. You've got to do this. Ah, you haven't got enough crystals. Or, or speed up the time by buying this. There's none of that. Okay, these are completely optional things. So don't let the microtransactions affect your score or your wanting to jump into Dragon's Dogma 2. Because it hasn't affected mine. What's affected mine is the fact that gameplay just doesn't feel as fun or as engaging or as enjoying, enjoyment-wise, as I did with Dragon's Dogma 1. Because the, the, the frequency of attacks are just, it's just insane. And it, like I say, it, sometimes they just pop in right in front of you. You just get hit in the back of the head all of a sudden. Or, or, or right in the freaking face, in some cases, because of the, the, the lod, the distance draw, perhaps. Enemies just spawn out of nowhere sometimes. It, it's bizarre. Anyway, that, that's my full review of Dragon's Dogma 2. Now, that could change maybe if I do hit endgame. I mean, I, ha I usually do reviews after I've completed a game or got to a point where I can say this is going to be a fair review. But um, maybe I'm being unfair. But I, I can't. I've got to Batal now, the Bistron area. I've already done the Elven area. I've done all the sort of grassy lands area. And I've just reached Batal. And reaching Batal was a freaking mission. Because I didn't have the permit. I had to go around the long way. And that long way was freaking evil. Okay? It, it, that was not a walk in the park. That was not a picnic. Think Elden Ring times two. It was freaking hard. Yeah, so anyway, if you want to see that video, it's, it's kind of entertaining. It's kind of fun. I had to use two wake stones, just as a bit of a spoiler. So yeah, you get to see me get completely battered. But yeah. I hit that video up. I'll put a link up in the top corner and go and click that and see what you think. But I think you're going to see my frustration. You can probably see why I've given this an 8.5 out of 10. I haven't looked at other people's reviews. I don't know whether that's fair or not. Maybe I should have done that before I did this, but I wanted to keep it even. I wanted to keep it balanced and fair. 
and I wanted to keep my review unclouded by other people's reviews. So now I'm going to go and watch those other reviews and see whether people have hit on the same things that I've hit on to see if it is fair. But at the same time, I trust you guys. You're the main people. You're also players of games and enjoyers of games. Let us know in the comment. What would you rate this game? Would you give it an over nine or would you give it a, a, the same score as me? Let us know. Until next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. And goodbye again, people in the view of us. From the first chapter, a new member emerged. Join my YouTube channel, and the Farts Bird. With thumbs up and comments, you lit up the screen. Captain Steve is grateful, you're the gaming dream. Our love for the games, no one can deny. Together we conquer, reaching new highs. Your words of encouragement, they fuel my drive. Captain Steve is thankful, you make this worth a ride. Game sparks flying high, you and I, we're on the same sky. Together we laugh, together we play. Captain Steve says thank you in every way. Join my YouTube channel and the Farts Bird With thumbs up and comments you lit up the screen Captain Steve is grateful you're the gaming dream Our love for the games no one can deny Together we conquer reaching new highs Your words of encouragement they fuel my drive Captain Steve is thankful you make this worth a ride